Hey guys, it's Vic, and today we're going to look at our seventh entry in the Victionary, the Custom Dually Squelchers. The Victionary is a series of guides to help provide a starting point for players looking to pick up new weapons, or those who want some tips moving forward with the weapons they like. The Custom Dually Squelchers, which I'll probably reference along the way as the CDS, is a custom variant of the regular Dually Squelchers. <laughs> it's a long-range Dually class weapon with Splat Bombs and Ink Storm. Something people may not know about the Dually Squelcher class? is that in its combined form, your shots are not any quicker. You still get the same number of shots as you do in its split form. This means that your time to kill won't increase after a roll. However, the increased accuracy that comes with your roll means that you should surely use it. Don't forget that the custom and regular dually squelchers have a unique quirk. Your accuracy does not immediately decrease when you exit your roll. Your Inkling will continue to shoot in turret mode for a short period of time after you begin to move again, unlike the normal duelies. This means you still have one reticle as you slide back into a fight. Your rolls have other uses as well. A fun tactic to use is to use your large rolls to escape certain death, such as stingrays. If you can't swim out of a situation, try your rolls instead. Remember that your rolls will use 5% of your ink tank though. The custom dually squelchers can do two things very well. Paint the floor and get specials. This weapon turfs very fast. With a low special cost of 190 points, even without special charge up, you can blast through ink storms if you play your cards right. You want to be an annoyance to the enemy team, giving you and your more aggressive teammates plenty of ink to swim around in. Here's the thing though, the CDS has the option to be an aggressor too. These duelies can roll towards shorter range opponents and either get a splat or force them away because they can't reach you. You have an extremely mobile long-range weapon, which is a rarity among weapons of this type. Some of your best matchups are going to be against mid-range shooters that other players might have trouble against. Because your kill time is a bit slow, you won't be able to get away with popping out of a corner and killing that pesky sniper on the other side of the map before they see you. However, that doesn't mean you can't try. If your opponents can distract that sniper, you can be the one to get the kill. This will work better on maps with open level designs such as Gobi Arena, where the snipers are still pretty close to you. On splat zones, your rains can make a difference. Keep in mind that a rain can cover the zone and take it for your team, but it works best with others who can be there to also spray. If you try to use the rain to cover the zone yourself, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself to not make any mistakes, or you're risking a wasted rain. Throw your rain ahead of you and your teammates and ride in with the storm. In tower control, your bombs are your friend. Keep the tower yours and only yours by pelting everywhere with bombs. I mean everywhere. Throw them behind the tower, on the tower, heck, throw them where you think your opponents are going to come running to try and grab the tower. Especially on maps where the tower is in an enclosed space, such as Mako Mart or Starfish Main Stage, this can net you an extra splat very easily. There's a lot of value in getting proper kills with your splat bombs. Lethal bombs can be one of the cruelest, but quickest game changers in Splatoon 2. Instead of being able to make that game-saving push, now the opposing ten attack is left respawning while you ride to victory. Leaving your bombs on ramps or grates is also a good idea, especially if you have some sub power-up equipped to throw your bombs as far as possible. You might want to try this on Arowana Mall. You can also try to throw your bomb where your opponent is headed, and then shoot at that spot to make your opponent get stuck. They might get splatted on the blast because they can't move away. The custom dually squelchers are very good at dealing chip damage. Chip damage is the idea of doing non-lethal amounts of damage to your opponents. This gun has a 4 shot kill, so you might see yourself getting assists quite often. That's okay! The truth is that you can't always go for the kill with the CDS like you can with some other weapons. Your accuracy is not good enough with this weapon, so it's likely you may have some shots miss. Your rolls are large enough that until you realize how big they really are, you might easily overcompensate your aim. As you get better and better with this weapon, you should be able to track your opponents easily and also move the camera around and take advantage of your rolls. Splat bombs have a decent non-lethal explosion radius and your ink storms can take out already weak opponents. Thinking back on tower control again, you can throw your ink storm towards the tower path and force your opponents into an ultimatum. Do they want to be weakened and possibly splatted by the rain? or do they want to push on through? If they don't run away from the rain, you can position yourself to get those few final shots a safe distance away and take out your now weak opponents when they come out of the rain. The custom dually squelchers fire enough bullets to be a great popper for Rainmaker. 
Another fun thing to do is to shoot over the Rainmaker to scare opponents away. If you don't want to get too close to the Rainmaker, you can opt for a bomb instead. Throw a splat bomb somewhere ahead of the Rainmaker to catch your opponents off guard. Many people are aware of this strategy today, but it can still get the occasional splat. You'll force your opponents to split apart and become easier targets with bomb strategies like this. Object Shredder works excellently for the custom dually squelchers on Rainmaker as a result of its great popping ability. Make your bomb do massive damage to the shield and pop the Rainmaker extra quick for a great push. In a dire situation, you can roll your splat bombs towards the Rainmaker to prevent them from advancing without having to put themselves in danger. Your ink storms will slow down the Rainmaker carrier if they try to push up towards you, leaving them weak enough to pick off. Don't forget that opponents who are carrying the Rainmaker are naturally slower than regular players. They'll be easier to track and shoot at, so don't be afraid to get aggressive. Similarly, you can use your ink storm to paint paths in advance for yourself or another Rainmaker carrying teammate. The Rainmaker relies on having excellent turf coverage to let you and your teammates score points. Your rain will keep the field your color and help secure a win. When you can't be aggressive, you can still make sure your teammates are successful with their own fights. Because the custom dually squelchers paint so well, taking a second to fire towards an ongoing 1v1 or firefight can help your teammates win their fight. Being stuck in enemy ink slowly adds damage and will also slow opponents down significantly. Being attacked from two sides at once can also be overwhelming for that single opponent, making it easier for you and your teammate to finish the job. If you can't reach the enemy cephalopod, you can at least paint the feet of your teammate. What this means is that you want to shoot towards your teammate to give them space to move around. Shoot to their side. Shoot behind them so they can run. Trust me, teammates will surely appreciate your help after they survive their 1v1. Clam Blitz with the custom dually squelchers is interesting. Because your only quick killing option is a splat bomb, you're not going to be able to quickly take out an opponent that is flying overhead with a clam, such as on Sturgeon's shipyard. In a situation like this, your ink storm is actually your best friend. Opponents carrying fully formed clam balls are constantly marked on your minimap, and they can be seen in front of you as well. Throw your rain in the direction that they should be coming from to increase the chaos when they approach your goal. In some cases, your opponent may try to run around the rain, and then you know exactly where they're heading. In Clam Blitz, your goal should be to paint the map first and then go for splats. Once the map is your color, you'll have plenty of space to move around in, and that lets you take advantage of your amazing mobility. If your opponents try to approach you and take your clams, you can move deeper into your own territory and then secure a splat. Your four shots fire far enough away and fast enough that you're able to stop opponents that may try to make a mad dash past you for the goal, such as end zaps or ink brushes. Lastly, let's take a moment to talk about gear. The custom dually squelchers benefit the most from mobility, special orientated abilities, and abilities that will help you be a general nuisance to the enemy team. Depending on your playstyle, you may benefit from equipping Respawn Punisher, especially if you pair it up with either Comeback or Special Saver to make up for the deaths on your end. The more aggressive you are with the CDS, the more benefit you may be able to get from Respawn Punisher. Just be ready to roll away after you complete your firefight, so you don't end up being splatted by the next opponent that comes looking for revenge. If you want to spam those reins, Special Charge Up and Special Power Up are your friends. Special Power Up will make your reign longer, meaning that it will force your opponents to move where you want them to for longer as well. Remember that while your Inkstorm is active though, you can't charge up another one. If your map is not looking too great, don't wait until your Inkstorm ends to begin turfing again. It's more important to have map control than it is to fire an endless barrage of Inkstorms. You have enough range that you can get plenty of special charge by covering up turf inked by your opponents. Ink Recovery Up will help you get your ink back quickly after throwing a splat bomb. Because of how well your shots can combo with your bomb, it's important to have a full tank to succeed in as many fights as possible. You want to be able to throw bombs to displace your opponents and then splat them when they get too close to you. If you can gauge where your opponents will run, you could also close the distance and chase them down if they're shorter ranged. Chasing is easier with mobility gear such as swim speed up and run speed up. Run speed up will let you strafe farther, faster, and cover more turf as well, while swim speed up will help you get away from a sticky situation. With this in mind, don't waste your ink storm if your entire team is down. You and your ink storm alone should not be trying to make a daring push, especially if you're already in the lead. Why risk it? That's about all I had to say on the custom dually squelchers. They're a powerful turfing force with a lot going for them. 
They're easy to use, but arguably difficult to master. You don't want to spam your specials. Sometimes, holding your Inkstorm for about 10 seconds to reposition will make it a lot stronger than it would have been if you just arbitrarily threw it into the middle of the map. You also have to be careful of longer range players, such as Jet Squelchers, Splattershot Pros, Chargers, and Rapid Blasters. Interestingly, you can actually use your dodge rolls to aggress upon the Rapid Blasters pretty easily. You have to be unpredictable though, because otherwise they can simply back up and slowly whittle away your health with the chip damage of their own. Also, don't forget you don't have to roll twice. Sometimes just getting a single roll to have better accuracy and for better positioning can be enough. Thanks Alter Ego for the suggestion. If you'd like to be like Alter Ego, leave a comment below on what weapon you'd like me to cover for next time. I always pick a comment randomly, so you could be next. Interested in other weapons? Take a look at the ones I've already done, and see if a weapon that suits your style has already been covered. Don't be afraid to leave your own thoughts on the custom dually squelchers, or other weapons, honestly, in the comments below. You might be able to improve your own play, or help others by taking time to talk strategy. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day! When these weapons first came out, I kept calling them the custom dually squelchies instead of the custom dually squelchers. It wasn't until I made a couple of Dooley Squelter related videos that everyone cracked down on me. So yeah, Arrivederci.